Hi everyone, it's me, Kevin. I'm back with another video. Today I am super excited to bring y'all something that is very near and dear to my heart. It's a passion project called Grundo's Cafe. It started out with some guy that just wanted to try and recreate some of the old Flash games from Neopets.com as well as Habitarium, if you remember what that was. And it's since expanded into what you're going to see today, which is just a fully fleshed out vintage Neopets experience. So there have been a few vintage Neopets recreations as of late, some with their own issues. However, this is easily the best one that I've played thus far. For those that are not familiar with Neopets, I highly recommend checking out this overview video that I did of what I do on Neopets in 2022 put it somewhere around here. But I'm just going to assume that if you're here that you're somewhat familiar with the game at the least. And if anything, this is probably the version of the game that you remember when someone brings up Neopets to you. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into it. As you can see here, the site looks almost exactly like what the site looked like back in 2005. It just brings out a lot of nostalgia when I see the format like this. They even have a lot of the cute sidebar animations when you hover over each of these links. And even when you hover over this, there's like a cute Chia and like the Bloomeroo, that's cute. I didn't even know that. Uh, you can also see the number of people that are online. I would say it's a quite a quite an ungodly hour at the moment. You may be wondering why am I awake at 5 30 a.m central and that's because I love to make bad choices. Another really cool feature that I want to bring your attention to is over here there's this sidebar and essentially it just has all these links to different things you can do on the site. I will say I already did my dailies because for some reason I am a horrible planner and love to do things even though I know I'm going to be recording and wanted to show those features. I'll walk through some dailies as a tester later but in any case there's other stuff like you can like click this and go see the wheel. They're all active. They all work. There's a quick link to the Kadotary. Different quests that you can do as well as other things such as, um, you know, if you have a pet that you want to always set as your active, you can click this. Easily do that. So it's easy, right? One of my favorite things about this is that this is entirely embedded into the site. There's no add-ons that you need to download. It just literally is part of it. You can tell that they put a lot of effort into making it as seamless as possible so that people can just experience a really great modernized version of what they remember. So the next thing I wanted to jump right into is something called relics. It's this unique currency that you can get in the game by doing different things such as dailies, quests, and so on. But essentially when you get them, you can trade them in here for 150 credits each. And when you amass enough credit points, you can get different tokens that give you additional features on the site. I think this is just such a cool way to engage players and like give them another goal to work towards. These give really cool rewards that I think are totally worth it. Like inventory tokens, you can get additional maximum inventory space name change tokens you can change either your username or your pets names uh, pet tokens this is my favorite where you can essentially get an additional pet slot for each one of these you use you can be in multiple guilds some of them can help block bad random events that can change your pets colors as well as additional galleries and you can even cool stuff like if you wanted a pet with an emoji in the name or like a special character you can get this token to help enable that and the item pet pets you can attach an item onto your pet rather than something that's like specifically designated as a pet pet so now that you've kind of learned what relics actually do, how do you get them? You need quite a bit to get everything that you might want and they've taken note of this and it really integrated relics into every single part of this site. You can get them from just about every single daily, from feeding cats, which they have enabled on this site, which is pretty cool. And you can get them from doing these quests or different site events that they sometimes host, as well as fishing them up or even putting together treasure maps. There's a lot of really cool ways and you know, if there's anything in the site that you can spend time on, you can probably get a relic from it. So you might have noticed I mentioned there's different quests that you can do. You'll probably recognize some of these like Edna and the Esophager, Talia's quest, as well as Kitchen Quest. Ignore my, uh, ignore these fails. Anyways, you can do each of these quests 10 times a day and they actually give you more than just relics occasionally. They give really great rewards in terms of Neo points, so they help to move the economy as things grow. So just to use this as an example, Edna is asking for a cheesy meat wrap. So I'll go ahead and look that up, see what someone's selling it for, 4,700, which sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, but look at this, look at this. I turn that in and I get 11,000 Neo points back as well as an eye candy, which is super useful. The esophager only asks for haunted foods, so you can reuse that there. Jumping into the esophager, I usually do really well with this one. So mummy spaghetti, snorkel snout, as well as the almost gummy rat. I have a, well, I'm almost out of these. Oh, I need to restock. I usually have a stash of all the haunted foods to make this a really seamless uh, turn in process. So I'll go ahead and purchase these. Sometimes it's a little bit more than I'm willing to spend. Sometimes it's a little less, but you 
usually it evens out each run gives you like 10 to 15k per turn in so i'll do one more example of the gummy worms so this one's 8800 i'll probably get 10k back so it's a net profit 11k even awesome they really have done a lot of work to make sure that the vintage experience is existing as well all the easy stuff that you can remember the pound and like the shops and galleries these are all live as well you can have different <laughs> Total side tangent, but I find the mobile game ads so funny. They're usually some like super dramatic storyline that have nothing to do with the game. But anyways, I think it's just really funny. You know, the bank is up, the money tree even, trading post, the auction house. Just a lot of cool features like the safe deposit box that, you know, you don't think about as much. Even most of the main shops that you can think of are up as well. Restocking is a thing here and they restock at very specific times. Even going to explore and looking at all the different maps, like all of these are active and just feels like a fully fleshed experience even though we're so early on in the process of bringing this to life another thing i'll note is that the battle dome is a really high priority in terms of a long-term project for the developers i personally am super happy about that because i think the battle dome was such a huge part of the neopets experience and i said it before but it's so sad that in the main site the battle dome is basically just awful it'll be exciting to see the old experience recreated and you know like exist in a competitive format again another thing i really wanted to talk about was how the user descriptions are enabled on this site you know i can like embed an image here and like talk about myself and even on the pet lookups i can put information that shows additional details about them i will say it's a little messy right now they've done a lot of work to make the site as customizable as possible in terms of css so if you're a coding expert you will probably know that that's actually a really great thing because it makes it a lot easier to manipulate the way the site looks for yourself but yeah as you can see like you can have so much customization on the site this is a friend of mine's user look up and it just helps to make everything look a little different from each other a little bit more individuality and oh my gosh i didn't even realize like the cursor on this is it's like a chicago that's so cute uh the boards are live i know everyone uses discord but such a core part of neopets in general is talking on the boards and i think another really fun and nostalgic part is like people have really gone all out with getting these uh fonts that you may remember the super glowy ones that you know you might think are a little tacky sometimes but they really are the quintessential neopets experience like all these like glowy fonts like that's so Neopets circa 2005, right? I think one of the coolest and most unique aspects of this recreation is that the developer Ben, as I mentioned, started off by wanting to recreate the original Flash games. So there are a number of games here that use the original art assets and have become a recreation of the vintage Flash experience. For those that don't know, Flash was discontinued quite a while back at this point, and more recently, Neopets has kind of integrated an update that no longer makes them accessible. There's not even a workaround that works as far as I know at the moment. It's cool that there's someone out there recreating the original experience now that we no longer have access to those games. Sockmit Solitaire recently got added. I know it's just Solitaire, but you know, stuff like this just helps to make the game feel like what it used to be and it makes it a lot more of a uh, engaged and kind of a immersed experience that I'm super happy to be part of. One really cool thing about these games is that you can earn 40,000 Neopens a day from these, which is quite a lot. And you know, the ratios are quite high, so it's really easy to cap that out if you invest some time into it. And if you hit certain scores, you can get really cool themed items. So for Doubloon Disaster, you can get doubloons, or for other games, you can get like transmogrification potions. Additionally, all of the games can give relics if you're lucky. Also, you can get avatars if there's one associated with it. So that's another part of the experience that's been recreated and I'm super excited about. So to play a Doubloon Disaster, starting right off, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm using my mouse to drag this around, which is a new feature, and it's because this is mobile compatible. So you can open this up on your phone and literally play this, like dragging your finger around on your screen to like like get him to the place that you want him to go. I'm not that great at this game, but this is usually the easiest one for me to cap out my um, I three items for the day. I usually don't do the 40k Neo points, but that's because I'm lazy. So yeah, this is usually a pretty chill experience for me. I'm usually sipping coffee and just going through my dailies and, you know, just like playing some games and getting my items and working on making my pets really cute and looking at different user lookups that people have built up. Ooh, 1,000. Okay, cool. So as you can see, I only need 900 points for my random item here. So I'll probably go ahead and end my game here and send score. So go ahead and do that, send score. And my reward here is Vo Codestone. You can get three items in a day and then it just becomes only Neo points. I'll try another game to see what else I can get. So, oh my God, Volcano Run. Y'all know I hate this game, right? <laughs> Wait, stop! Why is it starting automatically?
So I still hate it. I'm gonna go ahead and make it really big so that I can see what's going on and you guys can too. But uh, yeah, I just kind of do this and oh my God. Okay, so I just do this and I haven't even gotten the avatar here. And I think the ratio of people that have gotten it on this site is like pretty high. So it just goes to show I'm really, really bad at this game. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't make, uh, oh my God. Okay, we're good. We're so good. I should have died there earlier but you know what we're, we're we're making it we're making it i feel like every time i play these games i always like am so frazzled because i'm like trying to live and okay all right all right all right, all right. i just need to get like 200 more points please don't nothing kill me please yo maybe i'll get the avatar this run oh i got a shield too <gasps> this one's looking good this this run is looking a lot better than my usual ones all right i think the avatar score is like 3000 or something like that Okay, cool. This is going pretty smoothly. I'm just really dramatic, you see. Wait, oh my gosh, I got the avatar! <gasps> I can't believe I did that on camera. Awesome. Oh, and I just died. Okay, cool. I unlocked a new avatar. Woo! Good for me, right? Good for me. Go me. You do get an item, but it just uh, gets overwritten by the avatar um, notification. I got a golden Nurk mid, and that's something I didn't even talk about. Nurk mids are, are live here. So uh, as you can see, lots of Nurk mids, even the high score is active here. And obviously that also means that trophies are active and being handed out. Obviously I have some trophies here, so there are things going on. Things are moving, things are happening. Grundos Cafe is a place to be if you want to be somewhere. I'll go ahead and put this in and see what I get. I hope I get lucky and get like a paintbrush, but like I doubt it. Okay, I got 7,483 Neo points as well as a meat cake, which is just like really good. It's really good. All right, so I got 7,483 Neo points and a meat cake. Not worth it, but you know what? We're all here for content and having fun. We're all just having fun. So I think the last thing I wanna go over is something called the Neo School. It's a completely unique feature within Grendo's Cafe that they put in a lot of effort to build. And it's something like a weekly event that you can participate in, where essentially you can go to the different courses and when you pick one, it signs you up for that course. Course. And for a full week, each day, you're given a quest that asks for two different school supply items, as well as asking some kind of question that you need to answer that's either relevant to the site or relevant to the type of class you picked. So if it's basic mathematics, it'll ask you some kind of math question. And the rewards you get are also relevant to the course type that you pick. I personally went with Potion Brewing Basics last time and got some really cool rewards. Different courses give different things, such as quality of life rewards as well. So something that's really cool and another reason why this site is just so much engaging and like really cool. So I think I'm going to wrap it right here. I have definitely not touched on every single feature of the site such as food club and gourmet feeding and so on. But point is we're only two months into the site being live and we have this many features. I think that's a really great sign for what's to come. And I hope to see additional features get added over time. As I mentioned before, the signups are currently closed, but I will be sure to make a YouTube post whenever they are open so that you guys have a chance to experience the site as well. With that said, remember to eat a lot of food, stay safe, drink a lot, of water and I will see y'all for the next one. Bye.